Hi, this is Sarah from Sarayip.com. Facebook, The Numbers Queen, and Instagram, Sarayip1111. Here with your November 2021 numerology forecast and some energy tips and a little bit of a preview of uh, my 1111 chat that's coming up in a few days. So thanks everyone who will be watching this now and also in the replay. Uh, it's nice to be back. It's been mildly crazy, would be a gross understatement <laughs> of the past few weeks. I'm sure you'll be able to relate. So let's jump right into it. So this is based on my November uh, 2021 numerology blog, which you can find at seriop.com. So if you enjoy this video, feel free to comment 555 in the comments and or add some questions. I love hearing from you. I'm a words of affirmation love language. So we are in a five universal year, so that's 2021 reduced, and a 16 slash seven months, so that's five plus 11, that being the number of November. What does it mean? Okay, so this is a time for truth bombs, mental health check-ins, and a reconnection to our inner witness or student or learner. That part of us that is curious, that wanted to come to earth and just learn as much as they could so they could spread that wisdom and help others to ease their suffering. It's a really pure energy. So number five in tarot is the Hierophant, um, also known as the Pope. And this is to do with um, basically tradition and religion. And these are the structures and beliefs that we are hopefully updating this year, basically who do you listen to when the times are tough? Do you listen more to yourself, more to others? Are you able to even negotiate a bit of a round table between all of those um, wisdom keepers? So this month, November, triggers the number 16 card in tarot, which is the tower. One of the scarier looking cards, um, but very powerful and very incredible. So essentially it shows a tower falling down and there's actually a crown at the top coming off and it's literally this is that crown chakra healing um it talks about chaos the destruction of false structures hitting the ground with a very big thump and a lot of emotion and that's the energy and i'm sure um you know eight days into november you're already feeling that i have been crying my way into this month but for me that's usually a sign of recovery so for me it's it's good, even though it's it's a little grueling at the time. So this month is a preview of 2023, which is a seven year um, crown chakra healing as I touched on. So in the numerology system I use, the numbers and the chakras correspond. It allows me to teach the system very quickly, often within a few minutes. It means that you can use your Reiki, your yoga, your other knowledge um, very quickly um, to heal yourself. Uh, so instead of that rote learning, like what numbers mean, it's just using what you already know and bringing it together with a big hug. So, you know, one is the root chakra, two is the sacral, three is the solar plexus. It's all on my website, seriup.com, under Find Your Life Path. So here we are, really strong five energy, which is about new traditions, really strong seven energy, which is about leaps of faith, the end of what we can see and the beginning of that needing to trust in soul. Um, it's all about um, miracles from this point onwards. So who will be super busy, super triggered, really needing um, a lie down? <laughs> It'll be those who have strong 16 energy, whether that's your birthday, your life path, somewhere in your chart, and those with seven energy. Um, also, if you see 777, which is a code for spiritual teachers, in fact, the phrase spiritual teacher actually adds to 77. Uh, so seven plus seven plus seven equals 21. This is a really uh, important number in numerology. I mean, it's also a maturity age in humanhood, uh, but so 21, which reduces to three, it's the vibration of words like fear, peace, human, tree and angel, and you know, when I figured that out, I wondered if the only difference between us and what we perceive as divine beings is actually our ratio of fear to peace within. 
So really look out for escapism right now. The seven energy sometimes panics um, because there's that sense of, um, do I need to be rescued? Am I able to deal with this? There's often that, um, you know, there's, there's a sense of having to let go of the known. So just be careful of escapism, whether that's in constantly scrolling your phone, um, just wanting to give up and tune out, or actually, um, you know, just uh, basically going into loneliness. It's really important to face things front on. I've actually just recovered from, there's been a few months of this in our house, but conjunctivitis, which is, you know, seeing only stuckness, not being able to look straight ahead, um, having, you know, stuck grief, and it's just clearing now, but only once I had to take a good hard look at our finances and our home situation and whether we're going to be okay. So as I mentioned, be careful of escapism right now. This is not, this is not the time to panic. You have actually been building up to this all year and actually for many years and actually for many lifetimes. So trust that you're here now because of some really diligent work and that your body and your soul are not going to let you down even if your mind um, needs to take a little vacation. So keep going until you get the miracle is the theme of my forecast today. And some people are like, I don't believe in miracles, but I'm one of those people, I rely on miracles, as they say, that's the quote. And for me, a miracle is just, um, you know, something beautiful that we've just noticed. It doesn't have to be something rare. It's just when, you know, we're able to really truly see that perfection in something where before we just dismissed it. So October last month, it was all about a home life. Um, whereas this month, November, there's a lot about these emotional portals, clearing out the mold, clearing out the old. Uh, I often use word magic to help people to bust fear. So my goal in this work is to help one person walk free of fear every day. Maybe that's you, maybe that's me, maybe it's both of us, that would be awesome. Um, the mind, listen to the word, the mind. It's what you've mined, it's what you've picked up from life and kept and thought was valuable. Doesn't that open up the whole energy? So if you are finding your mind is full of rubbish, <laughs> It's as easy as opening it again and maybe asking for some help to declutter. It doesn't have to be an attack. It can literally be um, just that gift to our future self. So with November being the 11th month, I'm actually a life path 11 and I specialize in people who see 1111, which I'll talk about soon in, in this forecast. This is all about walking your talk. 11 is the legs, one is the root chakra. So it is literally about um, moving around and spreading the oneness. For those of you who are religious, um, Jesus actually has an 11 energy, that um, word or name, and he literally, right, he, he walked around and he, he touched lives one by one. And in fact, he also touched feet, if you um, have read some of the stories. So this month is about leading your leaders. And I know some of us will balk at that, will think, oh, it's too hard to upwardly manage. But if you're watching my video and you resonate with my work, you've probably been doing it your whole life. You were probably born pretty conscious and always kind of knew that there were things that you needed to tell your parents or tell your teachers to wake them up. So honestly, it's nothing new, um, but it's actually more satisfying now because the world very much needs us to say something and to be something. Uh, so to come out of hiding. Here are some questions to consider for this month. Um, where does extremism hurt your heart? When I look at the world, it feels like we're in the middle of a really ugly separation or divorce. Can you feel like that? Um, so when I was younger, I often witnessed my parents arguing. Beautiful people, um, very different, probably from different planets. Definitely from different planets. Um, and it was hard, you know, to take sides because they're both incredibly um, charming, influencing, intelligent people, very experienced in their different domains. My dad's incredibly intellectual, um, pretty much, um, you know, a, a genius at computers and engineering. My mum's uh, really good with things like money and people and negotiation and business. And it was hard, you know, in those arguments to, um, 
to go from one site to another, it, it really felt like being in a washing machine. And actually, as a life path 11, my path is to experience those extremes and then just pick and choose what's going to be useful for me. And maybe some of this may help you to um, keep going, you know, through this portal that we're all passing through as a planet. Um, if you watch my um, social media, follow my social media, you'll see I've been posting about um, right now, there's obviously a lot going on and it's about following the tilt you know, going with the tilt, but not falling off the edge. It's my biggest advice to you. So here we are. And the question is, where does extremism hurt your heart? Your heart is where your soul lives. And it's where your child lives, your inner child, you know, it lives around the solar plexus heart area. And we know that when we make, especially children choose between parents, um, it cuts them off from a lot of their resource. Um, you know, they might be, okay, so I'm smart, but I'm not creative. And it sort of um, depowers them. So I'm just suggesting be really aware of where you, you do that to yourself because this month is this amazing opportunity to reparent ourselves really mindfully, really compassionately. And the question is, can you lend an ear to both sides? When you are really aware of who you are, what you're here to do, it's actually possible to walk in to a battle and see the gloriousness of both armies and that is I think one of the purposes of raising our consciousness and that is not to say that you don't have opinions but that ability to truly listen listen has a 25 7 vibration you know it heals the crown the halo it also has the same vibration as the word heart so this is my suggestion to you the mark of a healer is our ability to stay with the process until the kindness comes up again. We do need to be very patient right now. We need to obviously take the actions to look after ourselves, do as much um, love work as we can. But there's a degree of patience. You know, we're only in the fifth year of a planetary cycle. The cycle is nine years. We're halfway through. Um, but that's still halfway. And if we can get through this year, that's a pass, right? <laughs> Something to um, give ourselves a little bit of a pat on the back for because we're still here. So what else do I want to talk about in this forecast? Um, so too much mother energy. Um, even if you look at the word mother, most of it is the word other and then the M kind of looks like a beak and I always think mother it's like someone who feeds others. Even when you look at mummy it's like a walking body. A bit scary huh? And mum is silent. So you know personally I'm always looking for variations on that word. I much re uh, prefer being called by my name, actually. Um, just one sec. So too much mother energy, too much um, association with, with that um, can result in martyrdom. It's interesting how martyr sounds like martyr or mater in Latin. And it can result in a collapse. There's just too much flooding and there's just too much possibility. So what happens then if we've got that too much father energy? Um, so that results in incredible rigidity, dictatorship, scorn. And we're, we're definitely seeing a lot of this contrasting happening on the planet right now. What I'm suggesting is if you're watching this, um, if you resonate with my work, it's about finding some sort of balance, some sort of daily dance with a level of respect for the opposites. You know, a love of that white, active, light energy, you know, the sun that grows us, but also um, an incredible acknowledgement of the power of that dark night, that restfulness, that reflection, that replenishing. A lot of people who have trouble sleeping, they're often afraid of tomorrow. They're often afraid that tomorrow will not be as good as today or yesterday. There's often a deep um, misunderstanding, in fact, of death and even ghosts. I just posted about ghosts. Um, you know, you are a ghost. You're just a ghost with a body. And when you start to acknowledge that, you'll understand a lot more about the world because children can see ghosts, animals can see ghosts, dying people can see ghosts. So if you're not available to that, you're actually really missing out on the wisdom of your elders and you're pretty much reinventing the wheel. So even just to keep an open mind that there are other beings around and a lot of them are actually really helpful. So other suggestions for um, this month's forecast, the crown chakra here, it's our halo, our, our crown, our king and queendom, our sovereignty, it's to do with our head, our hair. 
So my suggestion is really look at who is the ruler of your heaven, of your ideal world. Um, for example, go and draw God, <laughs> go and paint God, make God out of plasticine and uh, make a few. In fact, make a few versions, talk to them and see where they lead you. Um, because this is not to say that your version or my version is incorrect, but we have to, I guess, remember at some point that we decided what a God was. We decided what a leader was. And if those definitions are no longer helping us, we get to um, change that if we, of course, come back to this point of consciousness. So like I said, talk to your drawing or your statue or your Lego figure of a God or a leader even the world leader. Um, what if you were some sort of ambassador of theirs? What if you're actually colleagues rather than subordinates? You know, would you feel stronger? Um, I work with a lot of people who've had injuries around religious persecution. And to be honest, there's a level of that happening in the world. Again, perhaps there always has been. Um, and what I would say is we have to use fun, we have to use humour and we have to use um, playfulness to kind of bring that to a different uh, place where we can actually open doors again. So, for example, people who are very frightened of being struck down by God, um, you know, very much like uh, doing the wrong thing, becoming a sinner, being banished to purgatory for all their days. We do really gentle exercises like ask them to turn God into a fruit or vegetable. So uh, one woman, she turned God into a grape. So we had a long conversation with a grape. And I know part of you might be like, this is a bit strange. But then a lot of things we do as humans are strange. And all I'm suggesting is these exercises can free you. And it's worth a go, especially if you feel really cornered right now. So she talked to this grape and she really swelled with um, presence. And you could really see her just um, undoing a lot of the patterning where she felt really resentful or really like victimized. And at the end of it, she's like, can I eat it? <laughs> so she did, she ate it and she's like, oh, that was delicious. And I was like, well, you know, who's to say that wasn't, um, you know, a God experience. So just because something is in a book doesn't always mean that it is um, more important than your own um, experiences. You know, a lot of the, the books we refer to, textbooks, that's just someone who um, was really good at marketing. A few other things to consider. So I call learning L plate earning. You take the L, you've got the earning, L plate earning. Uh, it's like that driver's analogy. And the reason is because a lot of the people I study, so I have an interest in people in the top 1% of whatever they do. A lot of people I study, they, I suppose you call them winners, or extremists perhaps. They have a learner's mindset and they're very happy to invest in themselves, whether it's time, energy or money that they need to put towards it. They don't believe in free lunches. They believe in um, paying for their lunch and then joining, you know, a picnic on a beautiful mountainside. So this is a time, this seven month um, is a time for picking up new information, maybe from my forecast, maybe from other people around you, maybe even from your inner self. And one of my suggestions is to go to where the information is really fresh. So I have a saying, you know, where children, jokes and fools are welcome, so is the truth. I have a practice that if my children need me, I bring them into a call, whether it's a reading, a workshop, whatever. I want people to see that this is important to me. I want my children to know, um, you know, if it really is urgent that I'm here. I don't disconnect just because I need to, you know, get approval. And a lot of us have experienced this possibility now that we're working more from home. And I just imagine how much more um, genuine the world would be if people did let us backstage and we really could see what they were juggling. And yes, it's true, maybe productivity would decline, but creativity would increase. And I think it would more um, than make up for things with increased longevity, increased satisfaction. So go places where there's a lot of joy right now um, to balance out where there's a lot of pain. And that might mean if you have to go online, you know, looking up certain channels or even giving people a call. So are there any subjects you've been avoiding in the school of life? And this is a time that the universe will bring it to your attention. That tower card, that 16 energy, it's basically where we've built up something on false pretenses. So for example, we think we're much further forwards than we are. 
Um, I had that experience recently with my house. Uh, possibly we'll be needing to move house from our rental. And I think I had gotten into my comfort zone until I, you know, I we got a couple of uh, messages and actually, uh, you know, I had to start looking at the housing market and it's pretty intense on the Gold Coast. There's a really low occupancy rate and even with all of my magic and all of my friends, I could still see it's a pretty steep climb. So that was my tower moment and I'm still wending my way through that with my very best um, positive attitude and I'll keep you updated and I know a lot of you are in the same boat and I'll see if I can create some resources there. I do a lot of work with, you know, working with the spirits of the, the land and houses to make sure that the 1111 is all looked after. So anyway, look, energetically, we're coming into a pretty strong time. So we've just gone through the new moon. That was the 4th, 5th um, of November, depending on where you live. And you might have felt there was this burst of energy. Um, we're obviously heading into 1111 this week, and I'm planning to do an event where we can do some Q&A. So keep an eye out for that. And that, of course, is Remembrance Day. And I've actually been reading about uh, World War I, and it's, it's really touching. It's really touching. It's really important to learn from history, huh? So then, of course, we're coming into the 19th soon, and this is a massive um, change point. So we've got a full moon. There's a partial lunar eclipse. Um, if you know anything about eclipses, um, you know that they kind of expand and magnify whatever's going on. Uh, kind of like zo as they zoom in, they make it zoom in. And actually, a numerology eclipse has a 33 slash 6 energy, um, the same as blessing and also wake up call. And uh, all I can say is just hold your horses around then, um, because yeah, you can just expect everything to get bigger that you're working on. And I'm just like, ride the waves, remember? Go with the tilt, don't fall off the edge. So expect a lot of spirit signs around eclipses as a very high energy. Spirit's more able to reach us. You might get some really um, vivid dreams, um, premonitions, lots of 11 11s, lots of 12 12s. So 1111 is the original hello, especially for star people, people with master number numerology, and just basically people who come as spiritual teachers. Um, if you look at the numbers, you know, 11 11, it's essentially saying you come from a lineage. You come from a lineage, um, you have wisdom to pass on now and wisdom to take in. Uh, light the candles, um, experience oneness within yourself, and it really is about sharing. So essentially you'll get to a point in consciousness, we hope, and no judgment of course, if it, you know, everyone is on different time scales, but where you start to see those repeating numbers, and that's where I was, um, about 10 years ago, 11, 11, 11, I had this enormous um, difficulty in my life with uh, breakups and things, and that's when I started seeing those numbers. So all I'm saying is, yeah, you'll start to see 11, 11 when the matrix is ready to meet you and vice versa, and it's basically like, would you like to up-level? Would you like to make a bigger difference? Would you like to really know what's going on on the planet? And some people, they just sit in that first stage of 11, 11 awakening for a long time. Um, they don't research it, they just go, oh, that's cute, take a screenshot, send it to my friend, which is nice, but it's kind of like thinking all there is to learning Japanese is, um, you know, Ohio and eating sushi. <laughs> There's just a whole lot more to the continent, to the country. Anyway, if you're interested in that stuff, uh, come to my event on 11.11, check out my site, seriup.com. I've got loads of videos and things. I specialize in this frequency. But yeah, so you'll probably see a lot of them, uh, especially the next month, and also 12-12s. 12 12 12s uh, 12 12 is uh, the, sort of the next stage of the 11-11 sequence, and that's when we've pretty much started the sharing process. Often we have flipped from maybe a slightly more conventional lifestyle where perhaps we hide our views, especially our spiritual views, into where we have perhaps a side business that's quite alternative, we may have had a psychic child, we may have met a soulmate twin flame who's really, um, you know, opening our eyes. And then 1212 is where we start to create these teams. So I'm also still exploring all this. I'm really only 10 years in. So I hope you're enjoying this. If you are, let me know in comments. I'll have a look soon. Uh, so those are the main points in my November blog. And I've just got a little bit more.
because of course here you are um, on the video and I'm super grateful to be with you. So there is a very famous Vietnamese monk called Thich Nhat Han. He's um, in the process of transitioning around this time. He's in his early 90s, uh, similar to my grandmother actually. And I've been listening to his work and I found it really it's really helped me. The reason is that he has fully devoted his whole life to exploring this practice of Buddhism and compassion. And for me, I really like people where they have gone deeply into something. You know, it's, it's their calling rather than just something they dip in and out of. Um, I can really gel with that. So there's this beautiful saying I want to share with you, which may just help you to get through November and wherever you're at right now. Here it is. So if you truly get in touch with a piece of carrot, you get in touch with the soil, the rain, the sunshine. You get in touch with Mother Earth and eating in such a way you feel in touch with true life, your roots, and that is meditation. If we chew every morsel of our food in that way, we become grateful, and when you are grateful, you are happy. So he's, he's really known for not taking sides. Uh, when he was asked if he was a northerner or southerner um, in Vietnamese politics, he said, I'm from the middle. That's a position I've had to increasingly take in this business. I have um, people from different sides of, how shall we say, the, the health perspective coming in every day. I could have one client who is very much um, alternative viewpoint and the next one will be like a clinical researcher. And I have to be able to switch states. I've chosen to keep reading for people as they come in. I trust that they're coming in because they they need to come in and I need to meet them. Um, and that's been where, like I said, um, Thich Nhat Hanh's work has really helped me. I'm doing my darndest to come from the middle. I reserve my own free will and my own judgment. That's exactly why I do this work. And it's why I would encourage you, in fact, to learn um, palmistry, numerology, psychic development. I have lots of little classes. I have my Patreon where we talk every um, two to three weeks, um, just like this, and it's all really affordable. For example, the Patreons um, starts from about $11 US a month or $15 Australian, and there's no contracts. I try to make it like a yoga class where you can essentially come in when you need it, and if um, you need to prioritize, I totally understand. I'm not trying to hook you. I just really want you to be well. So this whole thing about the carrots, hey, I wanted to play with this idea. When I was younger, my now I look back, my parents were so spiritual. My mum would always make me carrot sticks and, and, and I would always share them with my friends. I've kind of been, I was known as the carrot stick chick. And so when I come into a situation like what we're facing in the world and people are like carrot versus stick, you know, carrot like convince people to do it, you know, make them feel that like kind of like social, social conformity stuff or the stick, they really punish them and like, you know, like hurt them almost. And I just think, well, whoa, what's the carrot stick approach? You know, is there something here where we can still really honor their humanity? Because isn't that the whole reason we've been doing all this work on ourselves for moments like this? My dad always said, um, when I would talk about my work and sometimes I felt a bit underappreciated in my previous jobs in charity and things, he'd say, they don't pay you just to sit in the chair. They pay you for that moment when everybody is lost and you have the direction. That, that one moment, it might be just a couple of times in a year. And I'm just conveying this to you because I'm hoping you understand the universe didn't like pay your ticket to come here so you could just hang out, you know, every day and take up space. I mean, that is lovely and that's still your right. But it was for moments like this when, like I said, um, people's compasses are going and you've um, done a certain level of searching and maybe, just maybe, um, you have a little bit more of a map. So I hope that makes sense. So yeah, this is a visual. So, you know, this is a carrot. And this is a carrot. This is a carrot. This is a carrot. None of them look the same. In fact, that one's pretty damaged at the crown level. But they're all worthy. This is my 11-11 joke, excuse me. And you know what? 
One of the reasons I eat organic is because it's made by people who are not doing it for the money. That is for sure. Ask them. <laughs> they will tell you in graphic detail. It's not for the money. It's for the future generations. It's for the planet. And so when you eat organic, this is the type of produce you get. It's uneven um, and it breaks this idea that we have to look good, that we have to meet certain standards in order to be worthy. And then you get carrots like that. <laughs> That's a carrot too. And so all I'm suggesting is, in my own playful Sarah way, is um, play with your food. What's right in front of you is the meal that, for whatever reason, your soul has dialed in for you. Play with your food. Um, chew every morsel of it. Get in touch with it. See so if you can find the, the bigger picture within the, the smaller dilemmas you're facing. I'm here for you. I'll you know keep making my videos and my blogs. You can always contact me through this page, through my Patreon, all these things. And there's a lot of people like me on the planet who do this 1111 work. So I hope that you know some of this has really softened how you are feeling. So just the last couple of things. Um, so just um, reiterating, we've got this 1111 energy coming up. What's the best thing you could do? Reflect, reflect on what you most care about this week. And reflect on whether you are truly sharing, sharing that area. So I'll give you an example. I'm known as the numbers queen. That's actually a name someone else gave me. And that came from my previous job where I was the budget queen. I used to be able to predict how much money they would make. I didn't always, I didn't realize at the time a lot of it was psychic. Um, but actually my passion is palmistry. So palmistry, body reading. This is the tips of your angel wings, the tips of your heart chakras. This is your, your journey in this lifetime. And so I've just done my first palmistry webinar in the last few days and I actually put it off. I, I found it was almost like I felt like I was dying actually preparing it because I was so frightened because I truly love palmistry. Um, and when I got through that class with the help of my beautiful friend, Dennis, my crystal healer, I felt this huge shift because instead of kind of dancing around my, um, my true love, I, I, I danced with it and I just want to thank everyone who came to that class and all of those who, of you who may um, consider buying it because it truly really was transforming for me um, and I wanted to just share a couple of things from that class with you now so one of the first things I teach about in that class is your skin so the skin on the out we, we use the hand that we write with the skin on the outside is who you were the skin on the inside is um, who you are now my skin on the outside is very soft, and as a child, I, um, I cried a lot, I was bullied a lot, I felt everything. But now it's quite thick, and I have, I've really toughened up, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate. Uh, but for those who have still got that sort of baby bum skin inside and out, it is a little bit like having taken some of those childlike um, features into your adulthood. And you're the types of people who might really enjoy palmistry because... Uh, you pick up nuances all the time, but maybe haven't had the language to um, give people the messages. And you also might find that you're deeply affected by vibes. And that's where the work like palmistry, numerology, whatever astrology that you do, it helps you to create the boundaries where you go, oh, I knew that about myself. You don't need to keep telling me. Uh, so it just gives us a place of spaciousness. Anyway, look, I'm going to wind up this forecast. I hope you've really enjoyed it. I'll have a super look, uh, quick look at the questions and then we will complete. So we shall see um, what has been going on here. All right, well, thanks everyone who's said hello. I can only see some of the comments for now. Look, what I'll promise to do is I will go through and if you write to me in the comments, I will get back to you. It can take me a week or two. Um, but yeah, look, I hope that you'll be able to join me um, on my 11.11 event, which I'll promote soon. If you want to keep in touch with me, sign up at seriup.com for my newsletter. That's just about to come out and I always have lots of helpful videos, articles, tips, things like that. If you want to talk to me in a group environment, get your questions answered, I have my Patreon group. Um, my next call is in five days and this is the best time to join because the, um, the payment comes out in the first week of the month. And apart from that, stay tuned. I've got my 2022 forecast coming up. And so, yeah, thank you so much for everything that you contribute. I hope that you have enjoyed um, 
the vegetables. <laughs> uh, this is Sarah from Sarayip.com, Facebook, the numbers Queen and Sarayip1111, signing off until next time. Take care. Bye-bye.